One of my worst memories of bootstrapping my last startup was a moment where I looked at the company bank balance and realized I might not be able to make payroll in two weeks. And I had to go to my personal savings and consider whether I wanted to sink even more money. I was already into six figures, probably around $100,000, $150,000 of my money into Drip. And I had to make the decision of whether I was gonna pull even more money out of our personal account in order to make payroll. Some of the hardest parts of being a SaaS founder is the uncertainty. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna talk about seven things that are difficult to handle or can be challenging. And if you can't handle these things, you probably shouldn't build a SaaS company. Even though it's the best business model in the world and you can build an amazing life and sell that company for millions of dollars potentially, it's still a pretty hard way to go. And if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you about a book that I think will help you stay sane while you grow your SaaS. In case you're curious about how I made payroll, I actually went to another software product that I owned and did an annual sale. And I raised, I don't know, $15,000 in cash in a very short amount of time. And that allowed me to basically barely make payroll. So with that, let's dive in to our first of seven things that you're gonna experience as you build your SaaS company. So as you build a SaaS, you're either gonna work nights and weekends, you're going to live off your savings, or you're going to raise funding. So if one of those three options doesn't sound appealing to you, and I'll be honest, each of them has their pros and cons, building SaaS is probably not something you wanna do. Unlike a lot of businesses, let's say a service business where you're going to do some web development work or photography or video editing, you can often bootstrap that just on your own time because you charge dollars for hours, you get it going, you get another contract, you hire a freelancer to help you, and you can build a company just by building it up like a snowball. SaaS takes a tremendous amount of time up front building with no revenue. And so the nights and weekends, living off savings or raising funding being the main options. There are obviously a few others. Like if you have a supportive spouse, you can live off their income for a while. I would still say that's living off savings, even if you're not drawing down because you're basically not saving the money that you would otherwise be earning. The second thing you'll need to handle as a SaaS founder is maintaining almost 24 by seven uptime, meaning 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Now, certain pieces of software are more mission critical than others. And so some SaaS founders have the luxury of if they have a few hours of downtime, it's not a big deal. But I don't know of a single SaaS app where if you have days of downtime <laughs> that your customers are not gonna be really annoyed. So there are other products where you don't need 24 by seven uptime. So imagine selling an ebook a video course where someone has that locally on their machine, or imagine having downloadable software where there is no uptime. It's just the software is installed on someone else's server or it runs locally on an iPad, say. One of the reasons SaaS is so valuable is that you handle everything as the founder. You handle the updates. You make sure it's always working. You make sure it's getting better over time. But one of the downsides is you have to spend a lot of time thinking about and working on uptime. And sometimes you might find yourself on a Sunday night needing to get up and fix your servers or make sure things get back online. And if you don't wanna do that, I wouldn't recommend starting a SaaS. The third thing you're gonna encounter as you build your SaaS is a long wait because it takes way longer than you want it to and way longer than you think it should. With a lot of companies, you can start it in a weekend and have a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars of revenue by the next week. Again, if you're selling services or if you write an ebook and have a big audience, you could literally write an ebook over a weekend and make money. SaaS takes time to build. And so whether it's nights and weekends or whether you're building it full time, it just takes a tremendous amount of time up front to get to the starting line, which is launching. And then once you launch, usually you haven't built something people want. So you spend months and months and months figuring out how do I get to that point where I've built something that people want and are willing to pay for. And that might take six months, might take 12 months, might take 18 months. I've seen even experienced founders take two years to find product market fit from the time they launched. And these are people with resources and funding. It just takes a lot longer than almost any other business model I know. There's a reason most startup accelerators are three months and Tiny Seed, my SaaS accelerator, is 12 months because SaaS just takes a lot longer than most other businesses. A fourth thing that you're gonna to wanna to get acquainted with and enjoy if you're gonna start a SaaS is either marketing or sales and sometimes both. A lot of product builders, a lot of developers think that if they build a great product, it will sell itself. This almost never happens. So if you don't have some chops as a marketer or a salesperson or have the desire to learn one of those skills, you're gonna have an uphill battle and you're gonna to have to kind of get lucky. And I don't like relying on luck. I don't like having approaches where you have to get lucky in order to succeed. I want things to be repeatable and I want people to be able to invest hard work and skill to be able to succeed. 
So if you don't want to learn marketing and you don't want to learn sales, I would say start a step one business where you are in an ecosystem like a Shopify app or a Heroku app. And with that, you can focus more on the product, on building it, on supporting it. But your marketing is mostly supplied by the app ecosystem because you have a channel where you can just get essentially low cost or free customers, which is the app store that you exist in. The fifth thing you'll want to get pretty good at as you build your SaaS company is customer support. And most founders I know don't mind customer support, actually. This can be a fun interaction with your end users and you can learn a lot about where you want to take the product. But I do know that after a few months of doing support, I know I personally get pretty bored of it and I get kind of burned out on it. And so my first hire was always someone in support to help take that load off of me and do tier one support. I do know some founders who continue to do it month after month, and it's something that's in their wheelhouse. I don't think it's the best use of your time as a founder, but it's certainly something that you're gonna have to do if you launch a SaaS company. The sixth thing you'll need to get used to as a SaaS founder is uncertainty. You might have financial uncertainty, like I talked about at the top of the video. You're probably gonna have emotional uncertainty because let's be honest, growing SaaS is emotional, and the entrepreneurial roller coaster can have you riding high one minute and feeling like you're gonna crash and burn and implode and like every competitor is taking a swipe at you and everything's going down and Google knocked you out of the rankings and your MRR is frozen or it's going down the next minute. And I like to say that being a founder is making hard decisions with incomplete information. And incomplete information means you have uncertainty. And so if you can't learn to live and thrive in an environment where things are changing very quickly and there is a lot of uncertainty, you wanna stay away from starting a SaaS company. And the seventh and final thing that you'll encounter as a SaaS founder is competition. In almost every niche that I know of now, there is competition. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't start a SaaS. It doesn't mean you shouldn't start a company where there is competition. But you have to learn to have a healthy relationship with competition. Meaning, if they make a move, you can't let it devastate you or distract you. But you also shouldn't just ignore and downplay your competition. There's a healthy balance between those two of being aware of competition, watching what they're doing, but not getting so focused on them that you're not focused on your own customers. This is a balance I didn't have in my early days as a founder. And it's something I learned as I matured and something you'll certainly have to deal with if you launch a SaaS company. In a minute, I'm gonna tell you about that book I think will help you stay sane as you grow your SaaS. But before I do that, MicroConf Connect is once again open for new applicants. MicroConf Connect is our online community with more than 5,700 bootstrapped and mostly bootstrapped founders. We have a free tier, a basic tier, and a premium tier, depending on your needs and desires. But it is an amazing community. It's moderated heavily, and it's the longest running, largest, and the best community of this type that I know. The book I've mentioned a couple times about staying sane while starting up is written by my wife, Dr. Sherry Walling. It's called The Entrepreneur's Guide to Keeping Your Shit Together. And it covers all these topics. It covers dealing with uncertainty, dealing with raising a family or, or a spouse significant other while you're starting your startup, dealing with burnout and all the other struggles that you're going to encounter as an entrepreneur. So I highly recommend it. It's available on Amazon or at zenfounder.com. If you enjoyed this video about some of the hard things that you'll encounter as you start your SaaS company, check out this one about the top 10 avoidable mistakes SaaS startups make. I'll see you next week.